we got to work with this guy every week. It's rough, man. Every week. Hey, welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm Eugene Edwards, and we're coming to you live from Fender Hollywood. And today we're going to do a deep dive into one of the biggest bands in the world, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I think everyone's been excited for this one for quite some time. We finally got around to it. We're going to show some of the super fun riffs, the, uh, the rhythms, the techniques, a little bit of a tone corner, and um, of one of the best-selling rock bands. What can I say? So thank you for joining us from around the world, I'm sure. Um, helping us with today's deep dive, is our great friend, Mr. Dan Ellis. Dan, welcome, buddy. Hello, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. It's, oh, yeah. I, you've been on Fender Play Live, it was probably years ago. It was before yeah. my time, I think. So, so, so thank you for coming back. Next time we'll pay the ransom a little quicker. Uh -huh. uh, and also helping us is our mad scientist, Dr. and Signore Dylan Calajuri. Hello. Hello, world. <laughs> Hello, world. Welcome back. Welcome. I mean, we're, we're applauding because he didn't fall off the stool just so far. Yet. Yeah. All right. So now uh, I want to tell you guys a little bit about Dan here. He's played guitar for Avril Lavigne. He played bass for the metal band Glassjaw. He's performed on Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, and most recently performed here in LA at the Forum. He's also one of our on-camera instructors. So most of you probably were recognized from there uh, from Fender, Fender Play Lessons. Tell us, Dan, what you're playing and let's hear a little sample of it. I've got a Fender Ultralux uh, three-tone Sunburst Stratocaster. It's got these awesome Fender noiseless pickups. <laughs> Go, go ahead. <laughs> wow, and that was the bridge pickup? Yeah, that's the bridge pickup. A lot pickup. of twang. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Dylan, what are you playing over there, buddy? You mean this? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you notice it? No, I, I meant... <laughs> ah, it's the Ultralux Jaguar. Ah, uh, feast upon it. It's kind of an Ultralux type of episode. This guitar is incredible. That's a gorgeous <laughs> color. What is that? The Texas T. Oh, God. Oh. That's just the taste. He's playing those chords with numbers in them. Do you notice that? <laughs> um, so now, by the way, I, I'm just curious, because I, 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 I'm seeing humbuckers, but that sounded like a single coil. That's right, I've got the single coil engaged. Okay, so you can split Splitting, each. coil tapping, like, yeah. Like four guitars on one guitar. Honestly, actually, and this thing plays like butter. No. <laughs> Literally. Well, uh, just to, to stay with the ultra theme, I've got the ultra jazz master in Mocha Burst. So we've seen this one before. We know we, we like this guitar a lot, and. <laughs> That's about it, because I mostly won't be playing today, because these two guys are going to be showing off a lot with the Red Hot Chili Peppers stuff. Before we uh, jump into the material, though, I, I wanted to remind you that all the songs you hear in today's episode, we, we have lessons for them on the site. So make sure you dig into that afterwards. Make sure you hit the, the links uh, down below. Um, and if you have questions or comments about the material or about the topic today, please drop them in the comment section. We'll get to them as soon as we can, we promise. And also make sure you stick around, because we have the Fender Gear giveaway, right? We sure do. Dylan's always giving stuff away. So make sure you stick around because today may be your day. You may be the winner. Now, let's, uh, now Dan, before we jump into the songs, um, a, a general question about Red Hot Chili Peppers and the guitar. I guess we're mostly talking about John, right? John Frusciante? Yeah. So what can you tell us about him in, 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 in terms of like his style? Is there, is there a major influence that we should reference here? Yeah, I mean, I, I really love Frusciante's style and everything he brought to the band. He's a really amazing player where he's playing a lot of lead guitar parts and lead lines, but they always fit within the music. He always lets the rhythm section really take over and, and everything he does, instead of being on top of the band, he always plays with them. Um, Why? And yeah, I that's think, a good point. Yeah, and, and one of the things, one of the influences that I hear a lot uh, in him is Jimi Hendrix. Uh, specifically on the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album, uh, right. it's it's all over there. There's so many parallels you can draw, and it's just such an amazing evolution of that type of playing mixed with funk and R and B. Right, it's like really Strat centric tone at that point too. So it's yeah. it's, uh, it's why you have that one there. Um, and uh, we'll we'll talk about the specific techniques that 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 John has probably picked up from listening to a lot of Hendrix. Uh, let's start with the tune. Let's let's play uh, "Suck My Kiss." Um, this is very funk influence. You're gonna dig this. And uh, let's see, you you got your bass going. You've got your guitar going. Do you have your your ne'er do well drummer ready? You guys are. Guy, uh, uh, here we go. Uh, All right. Well, let's do it anyways. Here it we came go. with you. <laughs> Take it.
Hey, right? Right? So that was that was suck my kiss. We have that on the site now. Let's talk about what a little bit. What what did you just do? <laughs> like what, what can you talk about that riff? What jumps out to you about about playing that? If you're going to learn that, what are we looking out for? I think some of the coolest stuff. Uh, it, it's in the Chili Peppers actually don't do a ton of this, and it's really heavy when they do. Is when the bass and the guitar lock in with each other, and they play the same notes together yeah, on the that's, same riff. Yeah, you and Dylan were like in unison, basically just an octave apart, just playing single note lines. For, for a lot of that, for most yeah. of that, right? Yeah, it makes it really heavy, it really hits hard, and, uh, and there's that really cool, we were talking about it earlier, that sliding pentatonic lick that comes in there, that they go in unison. Yeah. That just adds so much tension and so much energy and kind of bridges the gap between, it's the same repeated part on either side of it, bookended, but it just adds so much energy and so much uh, build up. Now, we, I think we have a question on, uh, coming from Sue on YouTube. What are those chords in the riff? So funky. So I think, is it talking about the, the F chord, is, you think, maybe? Yeah, so it's, it denotes like a, a diminished style chord. So you know the, the style in the... But what? There we go. Ah, okay. So is that, is that a sharp nine? And then the half step, and then you move up by half step. So we Wait. got sharp nine, sharp five. It's, it's really, this is stuff... This is dirty stuff. But it's, it is pretty dirty yeah. stuff. What's really cool about that, it's really, it's, a, it's really kind of a triad. He, you're only playing three notes at that point, right? Yep. So you're playing, so he's playing his low, his low E string and then your top two high strings at the same time. So that, you kind of get a nice spread. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So Sue, if you go to the site, go to that song, you learn that chord. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Also from, uh, uh, I think we have a question from Scott Fulgeman, I believe. Do the Peppers use one key more than others. Have you noticed? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. They like their guitar keys, but um, E A. Yeah, G. I. A lot of E A and G. I mean, they're very guitaristic keys. Yeah. There you go. The, 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 the riffs that you hear in this song, that style of playing was really popular during this period of time, like Red, uh, Rage Against the Machine, mm -hmm. Red Hot Chili Peppers. It was something that was happening a lot, and I think In Living Color was one of the early bands. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, good point. So it's like. This is a thing that really the 90s is endemic. No, no, no. It was, no, it was very, go again. it was all Great over choice. the 90s. It was all over the 90s. So hard to get it. And also, you know, it, it, but, you know, but there have been rock bands with like that funk influence. Obviously, Zeppelin would do that a lot too. They, they would, I mean, so there's always been this hard rock and, very and much. funk crowd. We like thinking about like, you know, when the levee breaks and the, yeah. and the crunch. Tons and all of Zeppelin. And yeah. So, so, so like you kind of listen to all that, that rock from that era. You kind of get, get, get the vibe going down. Uh, let's do another song. I think you have the, the, the lead on this one, right? I think we're going to do Can't Stop which is another, another rocker that's kind of funky as well. And then we'll break it down and we'll talk about what Yeah, when you're listening this to this, just, just as a primer before we play it, mm -hmm. notice which parts the guitar part move and which parts keep playing the same thing. So that's kind of attenuate your ear to that idea, like what's staying the same and what's moving. Okay. So that's a great, great little premiere to what we're going to do. All right. You guys, can you get it together? For... All right, let's, let's try it again. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Those cats stop. 
And most of our crew grew up on Red Hot Chili Peppers, by the way. So that's where you hear probably a little more applause than you do in other shows. I'm not, I'm not, oh, you can, you can stop making the face now, buddy. Oh, sorry, that was my duck face. But yeah, <laughs> this, is, this song is pretty cool. This is a pretty killer riff. So you guys got to check this out. It's on the site. Um, the, the thing I actually forgot to do at the top of the song, though, but if yeah, you were hard on your drummer, and then you had a couple of flubs. You know what it was? Right, I mean, the drummer, like, you got him. Spot right. no, I don't you know what happened that. over there. You know, he threw me off. Yeah. He probably owes me money. Oh, we threw him Anyways, under the bus. <laughs> The thing Terrible. is, is that um, you're hearing at the top of the song this. It's building over eight bars. It's a really long time. So try to try to take a guitar riff and build it in sheer volume. Yeah, consistently over eight bars. We have a consistent rise. It's a lot harder than you think, and it's a cool way to build energy as a band. So yeah, you're right. Well, we're talking about the, they had that tension. Uh, in that previous song where, the, where they had that chord that going up the scale, here they use it, uh, just the dynamic of the right. volume as, as, as attention for dynamic eight Dynamic variability. And it's great practice for your strum hand too, picking lightly and getting heavier and heavier and louder, digging more into the string, being able to do that with a very consistent dynamic going up takes a lot of practice, there's a lot of muscle, uh, muscle control. Yeah. And I also love that C major seven chord. Yeah. So in the, they, in the, they when it goes to that chord part, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to... Yeah, which would work. That's a little, yeah, it's a little it's more nice adult. Thing. That's got, has a little more melancholy to it. So yeah. I think we talked, I think we, I don't remember if we did a, an episode about Major Seven. We sure did. You did. Okay, yeah. so there you go. So you, uh, so, you remember yeah. that. So we've got the eight bar crescendo. You've got the, the muted strokes that are in there. I, I think the thing that's about this riff that you guys are hearing is you're hearing this bass line or this pseudo bass line move against this kind of uh, bleak part. So we have bass line moves. Bass line moves. So you have something that's staying the same and something that's moving around. Yeah. And that's also the melody line, right? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So that's going constantly, and he just keeps moving the bass note around. That's right. And that's how you write a riff, kids. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And we have a couple more questions here. Does Oh, uh, on YouTube, Jim K is asking, does Frusciante use alternate tunings? Any knowledge of that? Uh, I'm sure he probably Guys, anybody does. know? I don't think so. I can't think of it as, as a standard. I can't think out. of any. There may be, but yeah. it's, it's pretty typically standard. Too. Going we ask in, the com, in the comment section, yeah. they're going crazy. Because uh, I, uh, I think there was, I think there was a record where they were down half a step, but I, I, I could not, I could be misremembering that here. Also on YouTube, Dan Ratachki, Ratachki, sorry. Uh, how do you get the pepper sound? Well, in wow. terms of genius, well, actually, well, no, no, we're not, we're not going to do that that move just yet. Okay. Okay, not just yet. All right. Calm down. You, I'm ready. The tone you, corner's Dan. coming. I'm here. But let's talk a little bit about the overall tone, though. Obviously, yeah. the Stratocaster is huge, right? Yeah. I mean, that if you have a Stratocaster, you're probably more than halfway there. Yeah. In terms of amp sound, just got it clean, dirty. What is a combination of both? What, what, what do you I, about here? Uh, you know, it's uh, an overdriven Fender amp works really well for this. So, like a basic overdrive pedal in front of a Fender amp, uh, turning the amp up really loud. That's what I was hoping you'd say. It's the trick. So uh, warn the neighbors. Yeah, to a number of tickets as well to, at your local <laughs> municipal courtroom. You you know, he, he actually goes, he, he uses the strat a lot of times in the bridge position on a clean tone, and he usually has a really thin tone. Yeah. It's not mm. a big full body, there's not a lot of bass in it, and that's really, um, that's really common in funk music for you know, a lot of the rhythmic kind of strumming that's done. But the way he uses it is he really digs in with his strum hand and just really smacks the notes. And it's got a really great feel, especially in combination with the bass, which is so fat on the low end. Oh. So it's a really interesting sound when you get those two together. I'm glad you mentioned that really clean tone being key to funk stuff. That's going to tie into next, next week's episode, but I'm not going to mention that yet. But just stay tuned if you want to hear a little more, uh, learn a little more about that. Um, and this is a great segue to the next song we're going to do, actually. Uh, is, is this is a, a very clean tone. Uh, this is, and it, again, unless you're trapped underneath something heavy in the 90s, you probably know the intro to Under the Bridge. Whether you know how to play it or not, you certainly recognize it. So, so Dan's going to grace us with, the, uh, with Under the Bridge, which we now teach on the site. Maybe some of you have already started. Uh, and then after that, Dylan's going to talk about, uh, about the tone of this thing. So Dan, take it away, sir. All right. <laughs>
gets you every time, right? Yeah, it's put still the cats to sleep right there. It's you know what I mean? Gets you. Ending on a major seventh chord, correct? Yeah, yeah, just like uh, the other song. So. <laughs> All right, and uh, so you know, it's funny because we had a question when, while you were playing for, on Facebook. David Blowers was asking, uh, "I'm still learning and trying to find my sound. How much of this is guitar, uh, you know, effects and pedals, or just pure guitar?" So, a little combination of both. A lot of it really is just guitar into an amp, but there might be an effect involved. And this is, we're gonna turn this over to, oh, actually, before we get to you, if you don't mind, oh. the hammer-ons I noticed, right? You're, you're doing a lot of, uh, can you talk about, that it seems like a real classic Frusciante thing to do. Yeah, classic Frusciante thing, also another time that I hear a lot of Hendrix influence. Mm -hmm. uh, using the pinky to really add a lot of embellishments, to add tension, to add excitement to the music. Um, you know, you can take the very beginning, I, I did a little different arrangement than what's on the record there. Right. You've got the intro part, and then as soon as he comes in with the verse, he's just playing. Just single strums on a really basic chord progression. Yeah. But then, later on in the second verse, he starts playing half bar shapes, and right. he's adding his pinky to give it a full melody, a ton of movement, a ton of rhythm, all while still remaining underneath the vocal line. You still mm -hmm. aren't distracted from what the singer's singing. Right, so, so he really starts great playing. support playing here. So yeah, can you show us a little more what he's doing when he gets to that part of the song? Yeah, so we go from simple strums to Your pinky and you're doing those hammer-ons and pull-offs. I'm assuming the note you're grabbing belongs to that that scale or that or, or sits in that the key of whatever chord you're playing. Yeah, they're all chord tones. You know, kind of getting into the sus there, or just picking the regular chord. Like there's some great parts. Just adding a slide there and then picking yeah. can really add movement, even though you're not even necessarily adding extra to it. That's what's great. Yeah, exactly. You're not your angles, extra notes, and those little flurries. That also reminds me of Hendrix, and I think Hendrix got that from like Curtis Mayfield and, and, and Ronnie and the Isley Brothers. Bach. Or, yeah, and he got it from Bach. The ornamental tones is what they are, and they're like approach tones from below and above, and each tone in the chord has its own direction that it wants to move in. You can hear it. So it's like, it's it's as old as Bach. But they didn't have a, a pedal organ in the studio. That's so we true. Played it on guitar. So we had to do it on guitar. Yeah. Got to work with this guy every week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so now, now I noticed while you were playing, though, uh, it was a clean tone, yeah. but there was a lot of sustain there. This now takes us over to Dylan's tone corner. You may have noticed, you may have noticed the soupiness and the pianoistic sound of his guitar, right? So uh, Every let's, week. let's hear this. Let's hear just a piece of this. And the, the big trick here is compression. Uh, tone app, please. Now, I am now controlling Dan's amplifier, which is why I'm no longer allowed on tour with Dan. Okay, <laughs> that and your visa issues and the restraining order and everything else. Anyways, the point is, I'm controlling Dan's amplifier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it's like with compression, as you can hear an abundance of comp compression mm -hmm. in his song, uh, or, or and without. So go ahead, Dan. This is him with compression. This is with compression. All right, now without compression, go for it. With compression. Without compression. Basically, like the loudest notes that he's playing are being cut off, and the lowest notes that he's playing are being elevated, right? And that's what the compression's adding. Play the verse of the song. It's really easy to hear on this. See how everything's kind of being squeezed. And it has the effect of sustaining what he's doing as well. Right, as I was going to say, it's not getting louder, it's coming more forward, right? That's right, right. And, it's, and you're right, it's like you're taking this amount and you're squeezing it through a bottle yeah. there and it comes in nice. That's beautiful playing, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, it's a big trick. If you I'm want glad to, we asked him. If you want to feel like you've got distortion on, you've got that sustain that distortion gives you, but being clean, this is one of the big tricks to do that. And a lot of people associate with country sound, but obviously we're not playing country right nope. now, are we? You're right, you're yeah. right, exactly. Uh -huh. uh, Michael D8393 says, one of the prettiest opening riffs ever. Well, we must, we must conclude. Also, there's something about tone coming up, uh, right? Uh, is there a bit of a well, hangout there? I'd like to announce quite potentially the most important thing on the internet in the last Wow, <laughs> wow. Yes, uh, oh. we have 
bold statement. Tone hangouts in the community, the Fender Play community. So if you're a member of Fender Play, you can join the Fender Play community. And at the, this Monday that's coming up, the first mm -hmm. Monday in May, moi, I'll be on there answering all your tone-related questions. I'm Y2K compliant. Okay. okay, and I will get on there, and I'm going to answer your tone-related questions, and we'll, it's on Facebook, obviously. On the Facebook yeah, yeah, community. Yeah. They, they, there you will be on Monday. That's right. And answering tone questions. That's it. Wow. Yeah. You ready for this responsibility? I don't know if they're ready. <laughs> I guess. We'll, we'll just see how that goes. We're going to find out. Uh, yeah, exactly. So now, I'm going to ask you, now, Dylan is so scared about this next moment. You have okay. no idea. This is the most exciting thing. <laughs> okay. Dylan, you're going to hand me the bass, uh, and I'm going to hand it over to Dan. Oh, boy. This is very simple. You're going to be fine, because Dan's going to uh, show off, because he's, he's learned the bass line to Breaking the Girl, okay? And, and, uh, and of course, uh, on the site we do, this is a great for you acoustic players, this is a great, great song. Just for convenience purposes, though, Dylan's gonna stay on the electric guitar, but don't let that throw you off. Um, and uh, I think uh, we've got kind of a compound meter here, we'll, we'll talk about what that is, but, uh, but let's hear a little bit of Breaking the Girl if you guys are ready, because I'm pretty excited about this. Gentlemen, <laughs> let's do it. Abbreviated version. I don't know. You did it. <laughs> you know? The AM version of Breaking the Girl. Yeah. Way, but we did not break the bass. We did not. We didn't break the bass. We had a little stumble and run through, believe me. Uh, great job, by the way. That was Thanks. very, very smooth. Who, who knew he played bass? Who knew? Fender Play students. I guess they, <laughs> yeah. Specifically, but other than they, they knew. That meant I didn't know. No, um, <laughs> on YouTube, Stephanie Armitage says, oh my gosh, I've never been a big fan of Red Hot Chili Peppers, but learning about the guitar riffs and backup sounds so smooth and beautiful. Yeah. I say this is credit to Dan. Yeah, oh, and it's yeah, such a, sure. their catalog is so varied too. So when, when you go to listen to Red Hot Chili Peppers, you've got decades of material to listen to. Dude, they've been around for a while. And you can hear them growing and changing and they weren't afraid to change uh, and their sound changes, it's, it's, you know, they're an, they're an important band. And you know, I don't want to get in the way of band dynamics or anything, but I think he's a little hard on his drummer considering the guy's playing. <laughs> he's, he's really playing. Did you hear all that? <laughs> he's fantastic, this guy. I, now I know why you bring him. I don't want to give him a raise. He's, <laughs> but he's worth the headache. Drummers can you. be tough to deal with, so you got to stick it to him otherwise, you know? I, That's I, right. I think maybe, yeah, he's, he's, he's tough but fair. Mm. Uh, Colleen Al Albin, I believe, uh, says, for an absolute beginner, three months on acoustic guitar, out of all Pepper songs, which would you recommend to start? Oh, yeah, where do they start? What, what song, where should they start? Any uh, tips here? Yeah, so uh, I think Breaking the Girl is a good one to start with, actually, because you get to take this same chord shape. If you can play A, you're gonna be moving it. You could even, let's say you wanna to try to play it like this. Sure, slide those up. A little trick there at the end. Uh, so, what's, uh, by the way, um, uh, What's really cool, I, I kind of instruct my private students, have fun with your basic chord shapes. Yeah. Uh, and your open shapes, and just slide them around. You know, take your D shape. Have some fun with that. And this is a great exercise in that sort of movement. Uh, pedal tones, is that what? Yeah, so basically, one of the, 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 tr the trick, or the, one of the reasons this song has this like kind of serious but movement sound that's mm -hmm. going on to it, right, is you've got different chord shapes. So if I just play the chords, it's, it's a lot of harmonic variability, or a lot of different chords, right? But with the pedal tone, or the, the note A ringing out the whole time. Basically, you get those different chords, but over slash this A consistent note. with an A bass. So that's called a pedal tone. Um, 
That's one way. You, you learned a fancy music term today, pedal tone. Uh, also, you know, Black Summer, which is the new single that's on the site, that features some of the, the simpler uh, open position chord work there. So that might be, the, uh, Colleen, if you're looking for, maybe look for Black Summer uh, on the site and start there as a little bit of a tip. Um, and uh, in, in some, uh, Bull Poser is saying, man, this is the uh, momentum I needed to keep me wa wanting to learn. I'm like two weeks in on Fender Play, and now I want to learn so bad. Well, thank you. I'm, thank you, you know, Bull Poser. You well, if, if you're available, make sure you jump into that, that tone hangout there uh, and, uh, and, and, and hit the office hours too, because there's a lot of great encouragement there. Uh, but you know, maybe, maybe Bull needs some homework. Bull, would you like to, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, go ahead. All right, here we but go. So, yeah. If you're a beginner, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but a big part of the sound is uh, muting. It's being able to mute. You know, I'm sorry, I didn't get to all that funky stuff you're it's doing. It's funky. Because the right hand, you guys were just hitting all six strings. Right. But sometimes I'm only hearing one note. What gives? So if you're if you're new, uh, palm muting might be a great place to start here, right? So if you've already got, if you've got a D chord, being able to Your palm, palm mute it. is resting on the strings Fleshy while you're picking. Fleshy pot to the side of the hand. Same time. Yeah, and we've got tons of lessons on this on Fender Play, right? Uh, if, if you're an intermediate player, check out uh, syncopated strumming. This is gonna be for breaking the girl. What that is. So syncopated strumming is basically when you have <laughs> strumming patterns that aren't just on the beat, they're not on the downbeat, right? You've got some, you got a lot of up strums going in them and maybe some of them are not, uh, it's called syncopation basically, they're mm -hmm. like you're almost tripping. So uh, check that out for breaking the girl and then if you're advanced, mm -hmm. yeah, all right. Oh, hammer don't hurt him, what are you gonna do? I'll see you under the bridge. <laughs> they're, gonna learn, they're gonna learn under the bridge? I want you to learn under the bridge. If right. you're advanced, I want you to learn under the bridge. And you've seen what he's done to the drummer, so I'd get working if I were you. I'd really get started. It's big right. time. Big time. Okay, now it's time for the Fender Play giveaway. This is so, this is, I'm glad you're here for this, because this it's is exciting. so, it's, it's, a, oh, it's a huge thrill. It's a very important part of the show. Take it away, sir. All right, so every week we give away a piece of gear to a lucky Fender Play subscriber simply for using Fender Play for a minimum of 21 minutes or three seven minute sessions. That That's it? Streaks, yes. You'll notice that when you're on Fender Play, this little thing pops up and tells you you've got a streak, which means you've been practicing, man. Oh. And so you want to keep that up, right? So if, if you keep doing that, you get as, every time you get a, uh, three streaks or more, you're entered to win, right? You can be entered multiple times. So streak it up, streak mm. it out. Uh, and basically, if you do that, I get a chance to call your name at the end of the episode, mm -hmm. right? You're automatically entered to win the Fender Play Challenge. You can pick from guitars, basses, amplifiers, all kinds of different things, and hopefully I get to say your name at the end of the episode. Do you guys want to know who won this week? I do, just to see what your hands will do with that. Okay, my hands. Because it was a Well, lot. this week, a lot of like <laughs> this winner, and give me a little break in the girl to bring this in. You won because your name's on the big board and, and it never lies. So Peter, make sure you uh, get a wait till you get a confirmation email from us and then follow suit and enjoy the uh, guitar, bass, amp, whatever it is you choose. You can even get an ukulele if you like because I just like saying ukulele. Um, what else is what, what's new on the oh, site? Is it that time? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, fix your hair. Do I have a mohawk? Um, <laughs> all right. So, the, so we've got a new collection. It's the '80s metal collection with Sydney. Is it good? Is it good? Is it good? Okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, maybe you guys recognize this little ditty, right? That's right. It's Holy Diver. That's right. The artwork on the album cover. You're darn it is. Dio. It's Dio, right? That's okay. Uh, and it. then. Uh, I can't drive 55. Is it messed? Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh. And my hair's messed up on. Okay, anyways, it's, it's Sammy Hagar. Sammy. The higher the hair, the closer to God. I think it's, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Uh, it's, but it's, it's hey. Sydney's 80s. <laughs> so, so, I'm collection. sorry, Dan. Oh. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Dan. Oh, that was terrible. All Dan's so go to heaven. All oh, Dan's go man. to heaven. Oh. Listen, right. I can feel the wind on my head when I'm driving fast. <laughs> this is true. This is, he's a great navigator if you're driving. Uh, that's just Sunday. one of the many, many new things on the site. It's hard to pick every week, you guys. So anyways, check it out. Check out the What's New tab. Tons of collections coming out, and you'll hear about one in a minute, too. So. Cool. Very, very. Thank you so much, Dylan. And uh, Jamie Hanscom says, never thought of learning anything from Red Hot Chili Peppers, but this changed my mind. Oh, we've changed lives. We've heard it. Wow. This is a life-changing episode of Fender Play Live. Aha. Um, now, I want to have a, a big, big thank you to you, Dan, for helping us. It's so great to have you back thank here. Thank you for having me.
Thank you, Dan. And you know, I forgot to mention earlier, and pardon my manners, but I believe you have a, a bit of a collection coming up, yes, here on Fender Play? You want yeah. to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we've got the 90s collection coming out. We went through a bunch of the lessons I taught, and we noticed, man, we have some amazing grunge songs from the 90s. <laughs> Uh -huh. in, this, uh, in this selection. So we put together a really great thing and you can check them out. You can learn a ton of songs. We've got some simple songs and we've got some more advanced songs with some really cool techniques like hammer-ons and bends. Oh, so cool. definitely check it out. There you go. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for playing bass and guitar and, 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 uh, and hopefully uh, you know, kind of revisit some of your, your, your roots, your youth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was okay. very nostalgic. Ah, excellent. And Dylan? Thank you so much for all the all the time, the attention, and for and for well dragging that sloppy drummer here. That was that was awfully. I'm really happy with myself. Awfully too. big of you. Thanks. All right. So everybody, uh, and, uh, everybody else, keep safe, keep practicing. We'll see you back here next week, same bat time, same bat channel. We're gonna go out on a very chili peppery G chord. Or make sure you hit that capital G in the comment section. Uh, and uh, on the count of four, let's take it home. One, two, three, four. <laughs>